Um, thank you guys for staying. Uh, Emma was afraid that everybody was going to leave. I was like, that's not going to happen. There's too much goodness here. Um, it, as Amal said, my name is Gina Beavers. I am arts and culture editor at the Valley Advocate. Um, I met Emma, gosh, like four weeks ago. <laughs> Four or five weeks ago it, at the it, most. Yeah, it feels um, like I've known you forever now. I know, it's like yeah. 33 years now. But um, I met Emma at um, the Van Osburgh Gallery up at Deerfield Academy where he was showing his work, uh, Ten Little Nigger Girls and the uh, Chibok Girls. It was Forgotten, or for Forgotten Girls? Uh -huh. Forgotten yeah. Lives? Forgotten Girls. Forgotten Girls. Yeah. Beautiful, incredible show. Um, and so I got to see the uh, the celebration of black female form in life in that show. And I went and later interviewed Emma at his studio at Indian Orchard Mills. Uh, and we had, we just hit it off like that. We hit it off at the gallery, but he was so exhausted because he tends to do these huge things and then like burn out and then come back like a star, a rock star. Um, and I went to interview him at his studio and um, we really hit it off. And he told me about this project, about 17 year um, boy. And it's just, I, in my mind, I knew it was gonna be epic. Um, but you just don't know how epic something is until you actually see it with your own eyes. So I knew the ending uh, it, in that conversation. And I said to Amon, and, I, well, and I, I mentioned this, and I keep thinking about it in my head over these weeks. I said to him, what is it going to feel like when you, we, in a nice way of saying it, deconstruct or completely destroy this work that you've invested hours of your life in, um, in such a meaningful project uh, in this celebration of um, Trayvon's life and um, mourning of his death. And he said, I don't know. And I said, because I am a soothsayer, I said, you're going to be devastated. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to know if I'm right. So I'm going <laughs> to leave this off by asking, what did it feel like? I think that for me it was the it was the mapping out is when I felt worse the the, the worst um, the the mapping out of the lines and knowing what I was gonna what I was going to do mm -hmm. I think that's what made it real for me and somehow in concert with sorry not pun, no, no pun intended but in concert with Dr. Barber's um, um, uh, solo yeah. that uh, some something about those two things together. Um, mapping out this boy's uh, death and um, recreating his death, right? right. Um, because this, this ends up being a performance of, of that. Um, along, with this, uh, along with this musical score, um, I didn't know that was gonna happen. At the time I spoke to you, I mean, I think it may have been up to last night. I didn't know exactly how this was going right. to go. You know, um, but somehow those, all of those things connected and made it real for me. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I was devastated in that moment. Um, but it's almost like I needed to turn into another character in order to stab and cut him. And I couldn't be, um, I couldn't be, um, I couldn't be lamenting while cutting him. Mm -hmm. It was hard. At some point, that needed to happen, and I almost needed to wear another another guise for that to happen. Uh, and I felt those two things happen. As soon as I picked up the the, the box cutter, um, I turned into the other person. So were you expecting, for the 17 people that would come up here and do that, were you expecting them to have to, to <sighs> morph into that? I, I don't know what. I don't know, we, and I say we, because it's not just me. Um, um, Callie Hutchinson, um, who is the administrative assistant for visual art and who is kind of like our savior um, in many ways. Um, she's kind of like the nucleus, the brain mm -hmm. in, like that, in, in, in our department and just kind of making sure things don't completely go haywire. And so I'm like, Callie, <laughs> how is this gonna work? What are we, what am I doing? <laughs> You know, and so we, and, and then I spoke to a number of other people too, and I went through every scenario, you know, and, and, and some of those things played out. There are some people who, some, one person just didn't come up, you know, and so that person has their thing, left, 
number 13, wherever you are, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, somebody just didn't show up. And then, and then people did pass it to somebody else. Yes, like, I'm, I, I did, cannot do that. I did and we that. did expect that to happen. We didn't know if we would need to tell people, if you would like to do that, do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I think we just, I think keeping it simple was probably the best way to go at it. And we felt the, the, the space and the, something felt correct about this and I feel like people as they came in understood that they were part of the performance and that helped right. that helped um, because once you're part of the performance there's you go with you go with the performance right. it's like oh there's this thing that's happening here. Okay, now he's gonna pick up this red cloth. Okay, that probably means something, but let's see where this goes. You know, um, I'm in the way, let me just move. I, I didn't have to tell people move out of the way, they knew. And it was just kind of one of those things. Um, uh, and, and so I, 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 I have more I don't knows than I've ever had before. But I've never, at the same time, I've never been more sure of anything than this. Right. So this, I knew needed to happen, mm -hmm. and I knew it needed to happen here. It wasn't gonna always happen in this space. I went to the owl's nest. I went to a couple, I was like, look, this is gonna happen. So one of y'all is gonna be a parking lot, it's just happening. So figure it out. <laughs> and I think I may have said it like that to people, and mm -hmm. that's why I didn't get other spaces. So um, <laughs> so, so once I calmed down a little, I was like, Andy Bonacci, can you please? <laughs> you know, but he was really cool about it. And so, you know, I, I um, there was a conviction. Right. And so even though there is, um, there's a lot of I don't knows. There's something so strange and guiding about not knowing exactly what you're doing, but being completely and totally confident that it's the right thing. Absolutely. And and that doesn't always happen. And so I listen to that to that, you know. And I, I think I'm rambling now. I'll be quiet. No, I'm no, sorry. You, you, you sorry. Know, you're not rambling yeah. at all. Um, so one of the things that I know that I want you to share with the audience is um, you knew that this had to happen. Yes. But even when I was speaking with you and time was marching on toward this where, where you had to start to publicize that this was gonna happen yeah. at the space, you secured the space, mm -hmm. you weren't sure if you were gonna even be able to use Trayvon's name. Yes. So share with the audience <laughs> what that battle was, if you, yeah, if you will. I, it just opened up a whole new world for me. So without going too deep into everything, the, the general idea here is that it, <laughs> I, I reached out to um, the family yep. to, as a nice gesture, letting them know, you know, um, I, I did it through the, the Trayvon Martin Foundation, um, which I encourage um, all of you, if you've been to my website yet, yeah, there is a link there. Um, consider making a donation. If you're wondering right now, okay, what do I do with this energy? What do I do with this? What do I do with this? Like, ah, go there, <laughs> go there. <laughs> and the $10 you're gonna use to buy, you know, whatever college students buy. Um, <laughs> They're doing good work. They're doing good, solid work. And they're using, um, they're, they're using the image, the name, the memory, the legacy, the potential, the, 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 the never will be realized future. It's probably a better way to say that, but <laughs> to, good to do good things. So consider going um, at, at imaimed.com. I mean, yeah, imaimed.com, um, 17 years boy. The link is there or find it online. Anyway. I reached out to them through their foundation, and, um, and I never heard back from them. It was a nice, long letter. I'm like, they're going to get back, back to me, and it's going to be great, and they're going to be like, oh, we love this idea. So go ahead. We, blessings, blessings, blessings. That never happened. So as time got, grew closer, um, I spoke to a, a good friend of mine who knows these matters, and he's like, oh, that's so cute. You reached out to them for permission through their website um, because you thought that was going to get you a response. And he's like, this might be a legal matter, homie. <laughs> you know, like, like you, you may not be able to do that. There, you can't just, um, and I, I, a little more digging, and I got in contact with, the, um, with uh, one of the lawyers that they contracted to um, um, for intellectual, is it in intellectual property? Um, mm -hmm. Lawyer, because so many people have misused and used and overused um, images of Trayvon Martin. I mean, I mean, we've done it, a lot of people have done it to, um, in solidarity, you know, I'm going to a, I'm going to a march, and you know, people are selling teachers five dollars. Here's Trayvon Martin in a hoodie, and and um and it makes perfect sense. I'm like, yeah, I'll buy that because I'm at this march, and and where's that money going to? The foundation isn't seeing any of it. The family, but you you used him, even if it were if it was for good, you used him again. And then there are people who just open open up stores, like, hey, here's Trayvon merchandise, you know, and none of that money is going to the family. None of that money is going to his legacy, to his cause, and so. Um, 
I found out real quick that a cease and desist order could have been could have been my portion, right? You know, and and that because this is happening on Westfield's campus, that was the proposal. Mm -hmm. You know, double damage. Well, once they found out, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna need some black and white. We're gonna need some paper. We're gonna need some signatures." And so it turned into a bigger thing than I thought it would be, and that's fine. Yeah. I, I was, I mean, in the process of doing all of that, and I just I cannot speak about this without. I don't know. Again, I I'm not trying to impress my faith on anybody else, but I'm sorry. I I I'm a I believe in the Lord. I believe in, I believe in um, I believe in um in divine power. Um, and all of these things kind of fell in place. The promo video came, because the question was, how do you promote something for which you have no image? Right? <laughs> it's like, well, I want people, I want butts in the seat, but I have no idea how to tell people this thing is happening. And so there's, you know, I've met this great videographer, um, uh, Darius Johnson, who's actually been documenting all of this um, in a very big way for me. And, and I was thinking about doing a, 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 a a documentary on this, mm -hmm. you know, and he's, he's a young man, but he really has an eye for this, and he created an amazing, amazing um, uh, a video promo. So all of these things kind of came together, but it almost didn't happen because of that legal, it's a big question. That I was like, what am question. I going to do? One of the ideas I tossed around was maybe making a large composite um, image of not just Trayvon, but a number of other people. Right. Um, it's still 17 years, boy. And increasingly, as I worked on the project, I realized that this wasn't just about Trayvon. This was about so many others, you Absolutely. know? Um, yeah. Um, and speaking of these others, um, these all these young men around the wall, uh, some of the stories just <laughs> all tragic, but remarkably tragic. Um, and I grew up in Ohio, and Tamir Rice in Cleveland was one of <coughs> one of the most impactful for me, this 12-year-old boy who, who died instantly in a park just living his life. Um, so when you, when you brought up this particular um, project to me it, it really it really started to bring up for me all the uh, all the rage um, that I think that you have anybody with a who has a sense of justice or, or, or who um, watches the world go by and and, um, and and it seems sometimes that there is no justice um, so I, I personally am very glad I'm very very appreciative that you did this I was sitting where that young man is sitting, and I was reading the tweets as the um, the tweets that on on display here. on display here. <laughs> I haven't felt that much roiling in my gut as 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 the um, participants cut. There were tweets on on this screen that read Trayvon deserved it. He was a dog. He was a thug. He was this and that, and and the idea that this young man who this young young boy of 17 regard I mean we were all we are even 17 right now some of us perhaps uh, we've all been 17 um, you can't judge a, a 17 year old life by by the mistakes and the the growing pains that happen and I think what what impacted me it has always impacted me is that he was villainized um, after death after death Drag right along, drag through Dra them. It's one of yes. the worst things that is you. What is is it? Was the is the movie? Some of you will know this one. Is the movie Black Hawk Down? Um, is that the one where uh, where the the after the the Americans were shot down or killed by the some, is that the one where they were the bodies were dragged the dead mm -hmm. bodies were, there's there's something I mean it's discussed in the Aeneid I think it's discussed in in, in various Greek tragedies right. you really 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 want to drive home the lack of humanity or the or the or yeah or, or, or the if you really want to drag home how little you see of somebody is to drag their body after death it's like the person's dead already right and when you don't have sanctuary even in death, that's why the lynching photographs are, mm -hmm. are so tragic in a way. It's like, wow, the person's already dead. Now you, you pose them and you, and, you, and you string them up and you have them doing funny things. The corpse, there's something, yeah. there's something disgusting about that. It's not just deplorable. It's, there's something that it doesn't make sense. Right, it doesn't. It goes beyond anything. And a the, boy, and a boy, a boy. I don't want to understand that. So your purpose here in this project was to humanize yeah. all of these young men 
uh, Trayvon and all these young men and all the young men that we don't even know about or that that aren't on this wall or the, um, so talk about that talk about the humanization aspect of it what it is that you I don't know if I succeeded and I'll explain why I, I my issue one of the issues that I had was that I had a problem uh, I had a problem imagining Trayvon Martin as a human and not as a concept. Mm -hmm. He's a concept. Um, MassLive.com, I'm shouting everybody out, just I'm doing this on purpose. I, I get names correct, dot coms, <laughs> it's important. It's important to cite your sources, all right? Ma MassLive.com, thankfully, um, Peter Roback and the crew there did an amazing job documenting um, uh, what happened here and wrote this beautiful article and all these photos. I look good in those photos. Yeah, I, was, I saw them. I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> all right, they got my good side. All right, I didn't know I had two good sides. All right, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roback. All right, so, so okay. Dave Roback, not Peter. Dave Roback. Yeah, Dave Roback. So, and the comment section came. Oh, I read the comment section. The comment section Never came. Never read the comment section on math. I had to. Have it was about me. And I'm just I know. like, this is amazing. But it's just, it's, it's, it's the, the idea that it's, it's such a hot button topic still. Still. You mentioned Trayvon, and it's like people immediately, boom. Mm -hmm. Well, that thug, blah, 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 blah. And people say they know that, you know, thug is like the new nigger now. So they're like, yeah. oh, well, I can't say nigger. Well, well I don't want to, I, I have black friends, so well, you, well they're thugs. <laughs> I, so I get it, I get it, you know. And, but so there's this, there's this, but even if you liked him or even if you wanted him to, um, to be a human, it's hard to imagine him as not a concept. I treated him as a concept here. Mm -hmm. This is damn near deification when you do a portrait of this size, right? right? He's not a human. Right. He's still not a human. I tried to make him a human. Right. I took 17 hours to represent 17 years. I, did, I don't right. know how much more you can do, <laughs> you know? And he's still a concept But your to conceptualization us. was, right. it, it, it almost has to be a conceptualization because right. you have to, in order to celebrate, yeah. he's not here. He's, so right. it's like it's a remembrance. So it, it, there's, it becomes a, and he, it, and he exists in such a, a broader, scheme that yeah. you it's very hard to deconceptualize that's a true. person like that's that. True. Don't that's beat true. yourself up about that. I just I it was the, what I found problematic was was um, when I think about any of these boys um, is the fact that you 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 can only remember them because I didn't know him outside of this. Mm. I only I only know him the way I know him, you know, and uh, and that bothers me right. that I only know him the way I know him. You know, and so it becomes fun to imagine, you know, some, um, I, had a, I, had some um, I had some people who came today, uh, they were really kind about it too, because at first they were nervous, and I'm like, don't be nervous. You know, um, I had them um, to write, I had them write things that they believed maybe he could have been, like this one, somebody wrote in the end, there was only, um, there was only silence, sonnet, unspoken, okay, that's more of a poem. All right, someone wrote some, <laughs> someone went, some people went deep. Yeah. You know, you are a son, I think they said you could have had a son, yeah. you know, um, you could have been my son, yeah. and so there are all of these things, these could have been, these could be's, you know, um, that we'll never know, you know, and, um, and I feel like we should do a lot more of that, uh, and, and if, if we can't solve the problem, um, the problems um, that are happening, maybe we can talk more about what these boys could have been and really talk about them, yeah. you know? And um, I don't know, I don't know. It's a very, it's a very strange, um, it's a very strange space that this is for me. And I don't know what it is and I don't know where to go from here. It's very confusing. Well, I think that's an interesting point. It's a, I think it's a very strange fi uh, place for anybody who's mindful of what's happening in the United States. When you think about Trayvon ha having been killed in 2012, it's 2018, it's six years and there's all, and, and the division is even greater. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I wonder after this, what, uh, Imal said to me repeatedly in the five minutes we were here together, um, I'm glad it's over, I'm glad it's over. And I said, I guarantee you my 33 cents, I bet that it's gonna be like a postpartum depression. This thing is, has consumed you and you're gonna wake up and he thinks he's gonna sleep tonight. I think that he's gonna ruminate and think over and over again and ponder and mourn and think and mourn and ponder. I'm putting it in his head so I win the 33 cents. You're probably gonna win. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, with this, which is um, so unique and so special, where does it go from here? This project? Yeah. Oh, I can answer that. Yay. Okay, 
I don't know exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but 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 no, but but wait, but I have I have this much. This is this is this is and we don't have somewhere in here is 17 pieces. It'll it'll make sense at some point. O okay, so why 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 cut this canvas up? Mm -hmm. Okay, why it, this is this wasn't just for drama. Um, there's drama involved here. Um, and and um, another another um, Another another Cali another Cali approved. This is the cloths <laughs> and the different colors representing the seasons. There were every um, every season was represented each day. Um, so there was um, green for for spring and yellow and brown. And today was this day of death. Yeah. Um, and so the red was very very intentional. Okay, um, where does this go? I I wanted. The reason why this canvas had to be destroyed is because the point was we all, Facebook Live, like uh, everyone here, you knew about it. It was covered really well. I didn't expect that, yeah. thank God. Okay. So people knew about it. We all watched this thing grow over a 17 hour period. It, not unlike, you know, people around Trayvon watched him grow for 17 years. Right. You may grow fond of somebody after 17 years. You know, you may begin to notice things about about him that other people wouldn't if you're closer. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I'm not a portrait artist. It's not my forte. And I'm not much of a painter. I like to draw. That's my thing. I like lines. Um, but as I was, um, and I even told Darius this as he was, um, as I was doing preliminary sketches in my studio, you know, he had a fatty eye. Mm. That sounds like a diss. It's not. Everybody, we all, we're all built differently. He had, a, he had a fatty eye, almost like his eyes were almost always squinty. It's mm -hmm. weird. And when he smiled, the skin really... That's a very intimate thing to know about somebody. Right. Portrait artists get an intimacy with people um, that other kinds of people may not. So I don't know, who this, I don't know this boy, but I know how to draw his eye right. because I've studied his eye. You get me? And so there's something close about that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted... I wanted it to be as if we all watched him grow. So starting on Saturday, the private two hours, um, two hours of the performance was me staining the canvas, almost to like suggest, you know, embryo and, and pre-birth and reds, lots and lots of reds and grays and, you know, and then we started the painting. So he, 17 hours, right? And then the sudden just, mm. The sudden finish, you know, at the 17th hour, it just ends. Not unlike a lot of the boys here, where there's this, there's this, there's this belief, it, there's this belief that there should be more. A number of people ask me, where is this going to be housed? Where is it going <laughs> to, you know, what's going on? You know, are, you, is, are we going to install it somewhere? And, I, and inside of me, I was like, this is so funny. Like, you know, um, it's not really funny, but it's like, no, 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 there's no housing. There's no housing, because if that happened, then we missed the point, right. you know? It's gone. It's gone. That's the point. That's why he's wearing a crown of cicadas in the image. The idea that this insect that, that takes all of this time to grow from a nymph into a full creature, it takes 17 years for this insect to grow, you know, in the ground, underground, in trees. And then it mates, comes out, mates, sheds its skin, boom, dead. It just dies. That's the life cycle of the cicada. 17 years. And in that life cycle, Trayvon, or they die. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, even as, as I would step away from the image, I do a lot of back and forth, um, I'd step away. And as the crown was coming up, I'm like, yep. He is the king of the cicadas. He's the cicada king. He's the king that never was. He's the one. He's the, he's the, He's the guy who left too soon, you know? And it makes sense that these cicadas are prominent on his head because that's exactly what he is, you know? Um, this ugly creature that nobody wants to hold, yeah. you know? Um, and so that's lovable by only his kind. So, but that also has the possibility to make incredible music mm -hmm. that also leaves you know, exoskeleton sheddings <laughs> everywhere that swarms and, and, that cr and, and it becomes the inspiration for poetry and artwork. Uh, that is what the cicada is. And so he is the cicada king in my, in my eyes and in my mind. And so the 17 pieces that come from this work, I'm seeing them as seeds. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an entire new body of artwork, 17 brand new pieces. They're going to come from these pieces. If, if, if I hadn't done this, 
that body of work, which will probably be done in a year's time, would never exist. And so that was what gave me solace. Right. But still, even knowing that, as I was drawing the lines, I just, I just, I can't believe that this is happening. Right. I can't believe I'm about to destroy this piece. And I had to remind myself, no, remember. And that's what I told each person that came up here. I need your name. I want you to be a part of what's about to happen. This is good. This is a good thing. And they're looking at and they're, I'm like, I have the box covers in my hand. This is a good thing. Don't you worry. You know, they're like, look, <laughs> you know, black man's gonna come. You know, but you're like, you're like, the you know, I, I know, what's the performance, right? They're, they're looking at me like, what is he talking about? And I know, trust me, this is a good thing. And you just make this line right here and then give me your name. And because now we are going to build something and it's gonna be a collection unlike anything I've ever created. Yeah. I have no idea what it looks like. It's another I don't know, but I'm excited about that. Right. And now that, you know, and, and there is something to be said about a space is music and theater and, and visual art in this space. I am so inspired by my colleagues that I am surrounded by some of the most amazing people. And I don't know what to do with myself. So I feel, I'm not saying, I'm just saying this, I feel like a kid in a candy store. That's great. And so for an artist, I'm like, yeah, let's do more. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I think, I think you're right, 33, okay, you're 33, you're right. You're right. 33 cents, you said what? Yeah, you got it. Because, because, because what I'm thinking now is like, how do we, is, is, is this body of work, is this body of work a set of pieces that are going to be performed, that, that have to be performed to be completed. Is this something I'm building with music students? Mm -hmm. Is this something, how does theater get involved? Is this a play? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but no, but there's something really cool about it's that. Awesome. Right. It's and fabulous. so it's just, again, it's walking around with with blind, with, with the, it's walking around blindfolded, but absolutely <laughs> knowing where the chicken is because you can smell it. <laughs> I've never heard that, <laughs> but it works. I, it didn't mean to come up that way, but I didn't know <laughs> no, what else to say. No, I totally right, get so, it. Yeah, it I was, totally get it. So it's, it's, I, I'm really excited about the possibility of that. And, and English, English, my gosh, English and English is always willing to do um, collaborative work. And so writing and writing on walls and there's so many things that can happen. And so. I, I'm really excited this has happened. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm really happy this is over. And I'm really excited <laughs> that this has happened but because this is the an introduction to a much bigger project. Yeah. And I can't wait to get this into my studio and to just kind of like figure out. Sit with it. Just, and and I don't know, should that be filmed? I don't know, should that be publicized? I don't know what I'm doing, but it's very exciting. That's um, great. The, the, the young man here, Kevin Mason, who um, did, there he is there. Oh, I didn't know you were there. I was pointing to the things. These <laughs> represented you, but he's there too. And, and who did this great improvisational, I can never say that word right there, I say you right? You did it right. Improvisational piece, you know, um, using the, the, the phone call that Zimmerman made. That was amazing. <laughs> amazing. You know? Amazing. You're a senior, no? <laughs> See? Nice work. He thinks he's done. He's gonna leave, and he doesn't know that I'm gonna find him because you're done. Because you're done, buddy. Let's talk you're about done. him in third person, like he's not here. I know. <laughs> All right, so he doesn't know that I have plans already. Of course. So there's something I'm glad so you know now. there's something so cool about this, you it know, is. and it's very cool. I'm very genuinely excited that this is over, and I'm genuinely excited that that there's so much more that can come from this. I, I didn't think uh, there was a young lady who heard overheard me talking about destroying the canvas a couple a couple days ago. She was in here, and she immediately started tearing up. She's probably here. And, and, um, and I was like, no, 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 you have to see this as a good thing. And, and that's when I heard in my mind, I was like, no, these are seeds. Yeah. These are seeds. And sometimes seeds are hard to get. You got to get the seed out of the thing. The seeds, you, there's a way. You got to get them out somehow, you know, and sometimes they fall from trees and something has to break in order for seeds. W seeds are released in different ways. And this is one way. Yeah. So I'm very, very, this is a good thing that this has happened. That's and uh, I'm looking forward to right. more. I want to be able to um, see if anybody in the audience has a question, but the last question I want to ask you, um, based on what you just said, this has, um, the future of this is a beautiful future yes. because it will be a, a matter of, 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 of creation and, and recreation. Let's link it back to Trayvon, to all these other young men. What's 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 the recreation in that what 
is there recreation in that? What are you asking? I think what I'm asking is, um, we look back six years on Trayvon's death, and his death cannot have been in vain. None of these young mm. men can, men's death can be in vain. They're, they're memorialized right here, and there are people who have loved them, who continue to love them, who exist. So in a wider society, in, in the wider society, I should say, what's the, what's the hope hmm. that you think, if at all, if you, hmm. if you don't think that, that's fine too. I'm just curious because the beautiful thing about being an artist, I write and I paint, is that you, you, you can make your own story. You can make your own story. Um, but using, but, and I don't mean using in, mm -hmm. in a negative way, but, but using this as a catalyst to recreate or to, to, to go on to create more. What have we created from these deaths? What's happened in society, do you think, <sighs> in those six years? In, um, Gosh. Since 1944, it's since so, 1915. I, I, I don't even know if I have an answer. I understand. It's, it's, it's I a don't, tough I don't question. Know if, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I have an answer. I will tell you what it has created in me. It has created a deep, dark ball of rage and cynicism. Yeah. Cynicism... <coughs> Like bitterness, you don't necessarily, you don't say, ah, yeah, let it in me, yeah, I want that bitterness. <laughs> no, it you just, don't. It, seeps, it just it seeps in. starts. Mm -hmm. And then it grows, and then it grows, and then it grows, and then it hooks in. And before you know it, <laughs> before you know it, before you know it, some unsuspecting person comes, Gets the wrath. Co comes to you and is like, I'm sorry, did you say you're African? Does that mean that you like the sun? And, and they don't mean anything by it. And, and then it's just like, it's like what Whoa. did you say to me? And the, you know, the national anthem, everything just, it just comes out and, you know, and it's just, yeah. It is a very honest thing, <laughs> it is and I have to thing. keep that in check as a professor at a, at a predominantly white institution. Um, um, black folks, we call this PWIs. <laughs> I have to be careful because uh, I don't ever want to create a space uh, where, where students who don't look like me, who are not from my background, who may not agree with me, cannot verbalize their feelings. Right. I want the argument. I welcome it. Man, some students, have, when they've realized that, man, they've, the papers they've written, they completely disagree. And I'm like, this is an A paper. This is good. Good disagreement, you're wrong, but good stuff, <laughs> you know? But it's okay, like those right. two things Absolutely. can exist. They can exist. But the cynicism in my heart I know. has been a very real thing. It is a real, it is an honest thing. I, <laughs> I have shed genuine tears for Trayvon Martin mm -hmm. and his family um, with the things, you can see the tweets there, the things, the terrible things, um, they, leaked, the leak, they leaked his body into the, um, you know, the, the photograph of his, um, yes. and, um, and then that became memes. And, and um, Trayvoning. Uh, just. It's, uh, and so yeah. the, that, that, that bitterness that, and, and cynicism, and I'm, I, I'm using those words interchangeably, they're different things, but you get what I mean, mm -hmm. um, took root. And I really doubted that a, that a project like this on this campus would receive um, this much um, uh, Support. Support, encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it was with the people who were helping me put this together. Um, uh, for the life of me, I can never get his last name right. Um, his name is um, Mark. Thank you. Mark, I, you know, I want to, I bring up every, Saint. every <laughs> Saint Pierre Jean Paul, all this, okay. Mark St. James, <laughs> um, Benson Stewart. Um, these are unlikely heroes. Um, for me, uh, this space is not outfitted to do this kind of thing. This is a, a light. If you look closely at everything, people, you will see a lot of duct tape. Um, something may fall on you. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> this, this space is not, it's not performance ready in that way. Not for this kind of thing. And people had to come together. Um, white, black, brown. People look different. People had different schedules. Um, children. 
pains and knees. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm people that he's aching and, and he's like, man, no, don't worry. I'm going to get it done to try me, ma. And I'm like, really, brother? He's like, yeah, I got you, man. And, and, and the way they were speaking about this, this wasn't about me because I'm a likable guy. I'm actually not a lot of fun to be around. Um, ask Kelly. She's very nice to me, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm very, it's hard to work with me. I'm, this was about these boys. Mm -hmm. And so the crazy thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm coining here again, because we were trying to figure out the lighting situation, right? And so those lights there, like the one on Tamir Rice, mm -hmm. Emmett Till, we had to figure out how many lights were going to go into space, how it was going to work, how much money was going to come out of my bank account, all that stuff. <laughs> so while they were fixing the lights, and trying to test it out. They're like, no, 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 we lost Emmett Till. Oh no, we have to go back. Oh, also the Carpenters, they, they were a part of this as well. All right, anyway, Emmett Till, Tamir Rice. No, no, um, uh, Mike Brown doesn't have enough light on him. And they're naming these boys mm -hmm. and they're these collection of people, mostly white, mm -hmm. saying, hey, we gotta make sure that, that we can see Tamir Rice. And they're, you, they weren't saying number two or number four, we can't see him. They were calling them by name. And I was like, I turned around a few times and I'm like, Jesus, seriously, Jesus, this is amazing. That's beautiful. This is just in the putting this together. Yeah. You have a group of people making sure that these boys were visible, making sure. And thank God for Jasmine Harper, um, art student, senior year, doing my sighting, um, <laughs> who is responsible for putting all the graphics together for this. Thank hey, you, Jasmine, Jasmine, if you're here, you know, but Everybody invested in this. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that cynicism, that I, I take it a long time to answer, but it, it, that cynicism, every day that I worked on this got tamped down just a little. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, white people do care. You're not the only one, Ima. Like they're, they see it, people see it. He wants to make sure Emmett Till is seen. And the carpenters who helped install this, you know, we're reading them as they were installing them. Mm -hmm. They're like, man, that's, that's messed up. I didn't know about that oh young man gosh. over there. I read about that Ooh. young man today. It broke my heart. The youngest, person, the youngest person ever executed in US history, oh. 14 years of age, accused and quickly killed, of Ten course. Minutes? Oh my and um, it took him a while to die because the, the helmet was a adult size and he was like 96 pounds wet, you know? And, and it fell off, and it took them a while to electrocute, right? And um, they had to sit on, on a, a stack of books. The, the, people were reading this stuff, and they decided to care about this project. Yeah. This was not an investment in me. And that meant something to me. To answer your question, what the last six years has done to me is it's created it, a certain kind of cynicism has taken root in my heart. I am not going to lie about that. It, it is, I am being honest. But... I think what the Lord has also allowed is for me to see that there are plenty of people who want to see something different, who want to see something changed, and who want to make sure that those of us, those boys that are, that have been lost, are never forgotten. That means something to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. That's, um, now I don't know how to end it. I don't know I, if anybody wants to. I, well, I, oh. I, want, I definitely, yeah. I, I just want to thank you. Oh, oh thank you. Sorry. I, <laughs> I want to thank you for um, having the fortitude um, and the wherewithal to create and execute something so um, epic. In my mind, it's pretty epic. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, if anybody in the audience has a, a question for Imal um, about the project, um, so if you, we don't have a runner with a mic, so if you stand up and you send your voice booming out, you're good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trudy. Hi, Trudy. Um, incredibly powerful. The, the first point at which I was moved to tears was when he moved that painting back. Trayvon was looking at me oh, wow. here, and he was looking to the side when you moved it back. Oh, wow. That, how did you do that? Oh the, double, oh, the double portrait. Oh, you didn't see the other portrait until I moved it. I didn't see it. Wow. That. And it's just like, what happened? And, and suddenly he's looking away with this red coming out of his mouth. 
you know, I was about to turn around and start pointing and say, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, oh, the way I did, oh, yeah. It's not there. It's not there. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm sorry. Thank you, Trudy. I, uh, I, um, to answer, do we need to repeat her question for the mic? Uh, Trudy wants to know how you may, how you, how did Trayvon, how was Trayvon looking at her at that, in that in position? In two instances. In two instances, and then you move him back. Trudy is referencing. Um, a, and, why, and why you chose those two things. Trudy, Trudy is talking, is, is asking a, a question about what you can't see right now if you're, watching this, is there used to be two faces on this canvas. Um, one with a portrait of Trayvon looking out at us, and then another in, um, in charcoal, and, um, and uh, in, in a black line drawing um, of like Trayvon still wearing the crown, but it's a profile shot, and he looks completely terrified. His mouth is open, his eyes are wide, he doesn't have pupils. Um, I was thinking about that image of Trayvon, that last image that we have of him, the one that got leaked in the, through the media of his corpse. Mm. I was thinking about his corpse um, when I drew that image and um, this last breath, this last gasp, when it goes from, at what point do you, at what point does somebody realize that they're about to die? Mm -hmm. And and it's it's, you know, if you're in the military, you probably think about this more than the average person. If you're a police officer, you probably think about this more than the average person. Like, I could die tonight. Like, I could die. Most of us driving in our cars, whatever we're doing, we're not thinking, you know what, I could die. And I don't think he was thinking, I'm going to die. He was going to the store as a 17-year-old, like I have many times living in the Bronx. He walked to the corner store and you go get something and then you come home and you sit down and you watch your favorite cartoon. He was going to watch sports, but you know, all right, he was going to watch the game and whatever. The 17 year old watches. And I don't think he was thinking I'm going to die, Trudy. And so I wanted to, I wanted to, I guess it's kind of morbid, but I wanted to have Trayvon in those two instances. One, not unlike many of these portraits here, you know, the clean portrait of this is my son, this is this person, whoever graduation picture, but I wanted that instance that we don't necessarily see. We see it a little in his corpse, which is kind of creepy. We're not supposed to see that, mm -hmm. you know? But I wanted to, that moment of imag the imagination, uh, 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 imagining that moment, you know, wh 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 what was it like to be followed and then shot? You know, and, and that, that's why the double, the, double portrait, uh, uh, the double portrait showed up. I didn't always know that there was going to be a double portrait. Um, I didn't go into this thinking that I was going to be drawing a, a, a over the original painting, um, but it just felt right, and, and then it happened. It, it, one moment it wasn't there, and then I knew it had to happen, and then I started mapping it out, and I took a lot of time drawing in the air. I think a lot of people were wondering, what is he doing? Um, but I was seeing it, and then it happened. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you. Anybody else? How about this young woman? Um, so obviously earlier, um, there's a lot of emotions happening. Um, but at any point during like the seven hours you were working on this, did you get emotional at any other point? I'll just go here. Yes. What's your oh, name? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Colleen. Colleen wants to know if you were emotional at any other point um, during the process of this. Twice, another, t t two other times. Oh yeah, this actually, Colleen, brings me into a, a point I wanted to make about the, the importance of music, the importance of, yeah. of the music department in this, because both of those times involve the music department. Um, uh, uh, Mary Bonacci, um, um, uh, accompanied by Andy Bonacci, um, did a wonderful, um, a, a wonderful uh, selection that involved poetry and, poetry and, and um, <laughs> And a solo. It's just. It was just extraordinary. It was just extraordinary, um, uh, what 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 they did. And I, 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 I lost it. Mm -hmm. I just lost it. I just. I was. I couldn't even draw anymore. And um, it was so beautiful. And um, and and for me, each time, each time, mu the, each time the music department did something, it um, it made this very real to me. It's it's somehow. It felt like this wasn't complete, this performance wasn't complete without the music department's um, 
sincere engagement and they weren't engaged in a haphazard kind of like, okay, yeah, well, we can just kind of throw something. No, they rehearsed, they practiced, they thought it through. And so each time they did this, that energy that they brought did something. It did something in this room. I don't know how, and so each time, this, so I asked her to do it again. She's like, do you, I did a few things, like just do everything, Mary, just do everything <laughs> over again because that needs, to, that needs to happen again. <coughs> and then the Wind Symphony Orchestra, God bless their hearts, oh, yeah. They came out here and I don't know what. I just didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah. And they had to do it again too. Of course. But, but they, they, I, they, 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 they just, the song, I don't even, I wish I knew the name of it. Is anyone from the Wind Symphony Orchestra here? <laughs> Say it again. It's an unending legacy. An unending legacy. It's the perfect, even the title, when she came up and she said the title, I was like, okay, here we go. And so I'm over here trying to figure out, I'm like, there are too many people in this room for me to start crying, right? So I'm like, but what do I do? Do I make a beeline to the bathroom? No, I'm in performance mode. I gotta stay here. So it's, it was extraordinary. And that was when the, the, word, the, the word tribute really became a reality for me. This is a tribute. Yeah. Um, and it was around that time that I knew I was going to sing as well in tribute to them. Right around the time the Wind Symphony Orchestra did their thing, I was just like, this is, that's what we should be doing. There should be a lot more tributes being offered. We don't, I think, I think honestly, I think we pay attention to the wrong things too often. And I think that there are a lot more people um, who are in the silence, who are in the shadows, who deserve tribute, um, who don't get it. And so there was something very moving um, about, about these young men um, being honored in that way. Uh, when for so long um, they haven't been. For so long their political pawns, their legacies are just dragged through the mud, their Wikipedia entries, you know, but they don't, is tributize a word? No, Can we I make it one? No, I don't think so, but we'll make it right. one today. They're not given tribute, let me say that. <laughs> That's good enough. So <laughs> yeah, that is, um, that was important. So the music department brought that, and now I know that, um, and now I know that, you know, I, I, there's no way, there's, there's no way I'm not going to be, there's no way I'm not going to propose working with them on many more things because that felt right. Mm -hmm. It felt complete when they were here and I was working, that was right, you know, yeah. and I don't know what to do with that, but, um, but that is the reality. It was a good feeling. Great. Yeah. I've got two more questions. Anybody else? Oh. I'm wondering, what was it like to give people something to write on one of your works? And had you ever done something like that before? A lot of this is new for me. <laughs> a lot of this is new for me. Um, that happened today. It just felt right because I knew what was about to happen. And I was like, well, I don't want it to all be like bad. I want people's voices to be part of this too, you know? And so I started asking, well, okay, I didn't ask. I told people what they were gonna do. They came in <laughs> and it was, they came in and I came at them and I had a pencil in my hand and only God knew what I was gonna do with it, right? So, so they were like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, go to the canvas. They're like, really? I'm like, go to the canvas. You know, but they wrote, they, they wrote things under duress and it was great. And, but but I, I wasn't worried about it in part because I knew what was gonna happen, in part because I knew this was gonna form new works. Uh, I haven't really done something like that before, but it is, actually, yes, I have. It, it, it's not uncommon for me, especially with, with children, though. Children. If I, don't put me in a room full of children <laughs> who are just excited about art. And one of my paintings, oh, if I'm working on something, it's like, oh, well, I'm still working on it. It can be messy. Um, come on in. Let's go. Put your hand, you want your hand printed? Put it. Really? And they're looking at their moms like, can I do this? Mom is like, go ahead. He said, go. You know, so we've had moments like that in my studio where um, we have open studio and student um, kids come in with their parents and, um, and, um, and it's just so much fun. If I'm staining a canvas, they come and, and I'm like, hey, you know, you're going to help me stain this canvas. And she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. You know, and then we stain the canvas together. So it's just, it can be so much fun. We, uh, as scholars, we, we lose sight of how we fell in love with the things that we are scholars of, right? If it's, if it's writing, you love writing, you know? Like, make them love it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And everybody can love art, and so it's really unfortunate sometimes, like, in art, hist art history and just various, I've been to conferences, and you would think that it's, it's a funeral. It's like, <laughs> you know, art history should be the most 
in, in, interesting, fun class that any student wants to make. So to answer your question, because I'm long-winded, um, yes, I've done it before, but not like this. This was, this was, this was great. I wanted 17 inscriptions. It didn't happen, but it's all good. Yeah. I have their information, the people who cut. They're going to be put to work. They don't know. They don't know. Oh, oh, oh you got a number. OK. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Andre? Um, I consider myself an artist as well. Um, I'm an actor. Um, and oftentimes when I perform afterwards, I just, I don't know, I just break it down mentally. And I, I think about all the choices that I made and the I did. And uh, in a lot of ways, it's, you know, I, I see acting in the same way as you know, you start uh, a rehearsal process, you have this blank canvas. You, know, you go throughout the rehearsal process, uh, you start to at least the broad sketch, and then once you get farther along the process, you get into the details, and you try to, um, you try to come up with this concept. Uh -huh. I guess my question is, but a lot of times afterwards, too, I, I think to myself, oh, I don't know if I, if, I, if I really brought it out, or if I really, really drove it home with this. Um, so my question is, like, after now that it's over, do you feel that you, do you have any of those kind of thoughts, and if we, if you could, if we could go home with one, with the message, with your message, what would it be? And because art is very subjective. Right? Yeah. Look at this and think differently. So I guess my question is like, what is that message, and do you feel that you pushed it? Andre wants to know um, if. Um, uh, there was a lot, and I. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that was awesome. Um, it was really awesome. Um, uh, Did you did you do what you set out to do? Uh, do you feel that you did what you set out to do? Um, what message should we take home? And did you did you <coughs> did you do all that you could to um, convey that message? That pretty much okay. Cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> Reasonable facsimile. I like the idea of wrestling with problems and problem solving. I felt like this was that. Again, the idea of humanizing Trayvon. Is this something that I could do for me? Is it something? Is it possible? I, I still don't feel like I, I, I did. But, but then there's this, all I wanted to do was create a platform. Um, it started out as me wanting to humanize Trayvon, but then it quickly turned into wanting to um, create a space for mourning and to create a space for celebration, to create a space for, to identify tragedy, but then to also create a space for the possibility of hope, seeds. Um, and all of those things can exist together, I think is the point that I was trying to make. Uh, that in the midst of tragedy, tearing down somebody, there can, there can actually be seeds of hope there. It's, hard to imagine that, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that because you can't imagine it, it's not true. And so I was hoping that with all of the nonsense that was happening on campus last semester and that may continue on campus mm -hmm. this semester um, in terms of things being scrawled on doors and, and who knows what else, somehow in the middle of all of this, there is the possibility of grace. There is, there is. <clears throat> I don't think the conversation of grace comes up enough. No. Um, I don't think that we talk about grace when we discuss politics and our sides. I don't think the idea that we can all just chill a little bit <laughs> to really hear and see somebody else where they may be coming from, I don't think it happens enough. We say we want it to happen, but I don't think it happens enough. And maybe it's because we spend a lot of time discussing issues and not enough time building platforms for people to really express themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what I was hoping this space would sort of become. And I think it did. I think it did. Um, uh, I, hope, I hope that people are able to consider the possibility of grace more, of leniency, of, um, of mercy. Um, Extending that to somebody who may not even deserve it. Yeah. Even if you don't think they deserve it. 
extending it to them because you can make the decision to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that gets me is that we can all still decide. Somewhere in our minds, and I'm just, without getting political, somewhere in our minds, we believe, wherever you stand, we believe that a 70-something-year-old person like Donald Trump is unchangeable. This is exactly who he will always be. Mm -hmm. He can wake up tomorrow and decide. And I think there's something really beautiful about that. He is our president. When he stands at a podium and we are in the midst of trial or challenge um, or despair, as much as I vehemently despise the things he has said and done, the little child part of me that says, but that's our president, is waiting for him to decide to say something that will lead to comfort, mm -hmm. he, because he's the president. Mm -hmm. He can wake up tomorrow and decide. And I think there's a beautiful thing about that. Um, and I'm hoping that people leave with that, that grace is something you can decide to have it. You know, that's when conversations will really happen, when people decide to allow them to. And I think that's, I think that's where um, this stage of the project ends. That's awesome. Well, I think that um, it's very gracious of all of you to have stayed and taken part. I'm sorry that we don't have more time. I mean, I could be here till 12 o'clock because, <laughs> <laughs> because I know that there's so much to say and I know that Imal has so much to say, but thank you so much for coming, um, staying um, and taking part in this. And uh, you have to follow Imal. I M O I M E H. <laughs> all over, it. all over. It. I'm not gonna shout out my IG, but I would, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You pop up in my feed. It says sponsor. Good, Sweet. good, Yay. good. It's working. <laughs> Taking over the world. Thank you so Thank much, you everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.